Did I enjoy my life in Ghost of Canterville by Oscar Wilde? The United States Minister, here among us, had just built the Canterville Castle. Its owner, Lord Canterville, announced that the house had been the home of the Canterville family for generations. But he also warned him that the house was haunted, by a ghost that made all the inhabitants who entered it uncomfortable. Mr. Otis laughed out loud. He said to Lord Canterville that he came from the United States, a modern country where no one believes in ghosts. If they really exist, then the Americans would have already put them in a museum. They ignored the warnings and continued with the purchase of the house. Weeks later, Mr. Otis and his family moved to Canterville Castle. The Otis family was made up of six members. Mr. Otis and his wife, Lucretia, a beautiful woman with lovely eyes and splendid nature. They also had an English air despite being foreign. The Otis' eldest son is Washington, named after President George Washington. Then there's Virginia, a 15-year-old girl with a charming look and big blue eyes. Finally, there are stars and stripes, the noisy twins of the family. Their names come from the United States flag. The oldest family arrived at Canterville Castle on a lovely summer night, but as they approached the house in the sky, a dark storm appeared. Waiting for them at the door was Mrs. Umby, the housekeeper dressed in black. Upon entering the house, they went to the library, and the first thing they discovered was a blood stain on the fireplace. Mrs. Otis quickly got to cleaning the stain, but was interrupted by Mrs. Umby. The stain had been there for many years, and marked the site where Sir Simon de Canterville had killed his wife in 1575. Sir Simon disappeared from the house a few years later. His body was never found, and from that day on the ghost of Sir Simon hangs around the house. With the help of the cleaner and stain remover Pinkerton, Washington cleaned the stain from the chimney, leaving it clean. He wanted to show it to the family, but was interrupted by the loud sound of thunder and the flash of lightning. Mrs. Amy immediately passed out. The next morning, the family discovered that what Washington did had not worked. The stain was back. Washington cleaned it again, but the result the next day was the same. He tried again a third time. On the third day, the stain continued there. After the third appearance of the stain, the family had no choice but to accept that there was a ghost in the house. They still continued with their lives, as if nothing had happened, until one night Sir Simon the Canterville made his first appearance. The scare them, the ghost of Canterville decided to walk through the hallways of the house, bringing behind him some old chains. He waited until one in the morning to do it, ensuring the family had already gone to sleep. The first to get up with the noise was Mr. Otis. The ghost was surprised to see that Mr. Otis had not been impressed with him. Very calm, Mr. Otis offered the ghost a bottle of all to silence the chains and let the rest of the family sleep. But the ghost of Canterville did not much like the gesture of Mr. Otis. He took the bottle of oil from his hands and threw it to the ground, destroying it completely. Then he ran out of the hall, leaving Mr. Otis alone. The ghost couldn't escape from there. At the end of the hall, he met the twins, who approached him aggressively. They were dressed as ghosts with sheets over them. They started throwing pillows at the ghost, and I said he could only escape to his room through a wall. Once in his room, the ghost of Canterville began to think about what had happened, making him more angry. The only thing that could comfort him was his memories of past scares, from sudden appearances to more serious scares, like the death of Lady Stripfield, who drowned after the ghost caught her by the neck. He was sure that no other ghost in the history of England had treated her so badly. He wasn't going to allow this kind of behavior towards him to continue, and at that moment he declared revenge against the Otis family. The next day, the Otis family's topic of conversation was the ghost of Canterville. Mr. Otis was somewhat angry that Sir Simon had not accepted the bottle of all that he had offered him. He swore if the ghost did nothing to stop the noise of its chains, he would take them off himself. A few days passed and the ghost of Canterville did not appear. Washington continued to clean the blood stain from the fireplace daily. And if every morning the stain returned, only now when it reappeared, its color changed. The scent to tame the family. But much so that every night they made bets between themselves to see what color the stain would have the next day. The only one who didn't participate in the fun was Virginia. Every morning she looked at the stain sadly and almost started crying the morning the stain turned green. Finally, the ghost of Canterville decided to scare them again. His plan was to dress up in an old suit of armor, but while he was putting it on, he hit it by accident, and the armor fell to the ground with a strong blow. The family went down to where it was, thinking it was a robbery, but upon arrival, 
They found Sir Simon with his hands on his knees. The twins started shooting the ghost with their toy guns. Well, Mr. Otis pointed a real rifle at him and asked him to raise his arms. The upset ghost ran away from the family and managed to calm down once he reached the top of the stairs. There he made one last attempt to scare them with a macabre laugh. Instead, Mrs. Otis thought he was sick and offered him medicine. The ghost planned to scare her by changing into the shape of a big black doll. But when he heard Mr. Otis and the twins getting closer, he returned to his room. He thought the family would be surprised to see a ghost dressed in armor. He admitted to himself that the armor had fallen because it was very heavy, and he had not been able to get up with the suit on. The failure of his plan made him stay in bed for a few days. During this time, he thought about his next plan to scare the family. With a dagger in hand, he would enter their rooms and scare them with various tactics, making them look while stabbing his neck, whispering secrets from the grave, and sitting on top of them. He put the plan into action. But when he got to the hallway, he was scared to find another terrifying ghost. He quickly returned to his room and hid inside the bed, losing the dagger on the way. He left his room at dawn, and with the light coming through the windows, he discovered that the ghost in the hall was false, but up by the Otis family, by the sign next to it. Various they saw that after the rooster crowed twice, there would be bloody crimes and murders. But that morning, the rooster crowed only once. All week, Sir Simon stayed in bed. He had given up trying to scare the family, and he would stop putting the blood stain on the fireplace every morning. There were scares that he could still do, like appearing in the window, scaring whoever was passing by. If he had to use the chains, he made sure to grease them so as not to make noise at night. But the twins continued their antics. Once they put threads in the hallways to trip Simon. And on top of that, the butter covered stairs to make him slip when going down. He was tired of their traps. The whole night he went to the twins' room and opened the door, hoping to catch them by surprise. Only they were one step ahead. Descending in the frame, Sir Simon felt a bucket of water fall down, completely wetting him. Consequently, Sir Simon became ill. For a while, he walked around the house with slippers on his feet and wrapped in blankets to avoid getting worse. The twins continued with the traps. But when he stopped facing the hallways, all they did was annoy the rest. The oldest family thought that the ghost was gone and life returned to normal. Mrs. Otis organized social events. Washington played cards with the twins. Virginia rode horses, and Mr. Otis wrote a letter to Lord Canterville, informing him of the ghost. Until one day the Duke of Cheshire paid a visit to the house. His family had been terrified by the ghost. His presence inspired Sir Simon to scare him. But at the last moment, the ghost ruled out the possibility, because of his fear of the twins. The following days, Virginia spent most of her time with the Duke, strolling through the gardens of the house. During one of her walks, she entered the house and found Sir Simon sitting in front of a window looking sad. Virginia told him that she felt sorry for him, but not to worry, as her brothers would return to school in the fall and finally leave him alone. It was also angry with him for his bad behavior towards the family and for having murdered his wife in the past. The ghost replied that he had his own reasons for killing her, that the worst thing was that his brothers and they left him to starve. The reason why he became a ghost. I didn't know what she had just heard. Virginia offered the ghost a snack. But Simon did not accept the offer, but appreciated the gesture. He said she was kind and caring, not like her horrible family. To which Virginia bitterly replied, he was the horrible one, for having stolen her paint to put the stain on the fireplace every day. By stealing them, he had left her without paints and colors, so that she could freely paint whatever she wanted. Also, the colors he had decided to use for the stain seemed ridiculous. Because who has seen green blood? Virginia said goodbye to the ghost, but he begged her to stay and talked to him for a little while longer. He said he hadn't slept for 300 years, and that he needed her help to get sleep and rest. He told her about the ancient prophecy, that a young girl like her would be the only one to bring peace to the house. All she had to do was cry for him, and pray for the forgiveness of his sins. If an old almond tree blossomed, it would mean it had worked. Virginia agreed to help him, and the two went to an unknown part of the castle. Along the way, the animals carved on the walls, and hunters embroidered on the tapestries came to life. They warned her not to continue, but she ignored them and followed the ghost. Buddha's family was alarmed to find Virginia nowhere, and they suspected that the group of gypsies camping near the house were the culprits. The Lord Otis and the Duke came out for them, but the gypsies knew nothing of Virginia. They were still willing to help them find her.
Flushington joined the rest of the group to also participate in the search. They searched her all over the property and in the nearby towns, but she was nowhere. Until just at midnight, the love room was heard throughout the house, followed by a very loud scream. Virginia appeared at the top of the stairs with a small golden chest in her hands. They told them that the chest had been given to her by the ghost of Sir Simon before he died, and that it was full of jewels. Then she asked them to accompany her to the secret room. Inside they found a skeleton chained to the wall. Virginia told them the ghost would never bother them again. His sins had been forgiven, and he could rest in peace. Outside the house, the threw to a Norman tree blossom. Lord Kendra will arrange a grand funeral for Sir Simon, attended by all members of the family, and Mrs. Omni. The hero just attempted to return the chest to Lord Canterville. He felt it was wrong to allow Virginia to keep such valuable jewelry. But Lord Canterville told him that was no problem. Virginia had done her family a great service and deserved to have the jewelry. He reminded Mr. Rodis that he had bought a house with the ghost, including all the belongings. Virginia got engaged to the Duke, and after a few days they got married. The jewels were helpful when she had to appear in front of Queen Victoria. At the beginning, Mr. Rodis did not agree with the marriage of his daughter. But when he saw the magnitude and beauty of the ceremony, he changed his mind. After the hunting meeting, they decided to visit the tomb of Sir Simon. The Duke asked Virginia what happened when the ghost died. She replied that she couldn't tell him, but that the ghost had made her see what life and death meant. And why love is stronger than both. The Duke was satisfied with that answer. But he said that she could only keep the secret if she promised to tell her future children one day. Virginia blushed and accepted the promise. And so ends the summary of the Ghost of Canterville. If you liked it, hit this video like. And subscribe for more summaries of the classics. Until next video.